I'm Larissa. Welcome to Goblins of Discord. Uh, this series on personality traps of the Enneagram types is an excerpt from a course I made over a year ago, and I've gotten a lot deeper on this subject. So I will be creating more content moving forward for the YouTube, but also the membership that I just launched, uh, which you can join. And I'll be doing live calls and things of that nature. So there'll be a, a pathway for people to ask questions about this and how to work with this. And also, um, if you are like, damn, I'm living myself, fulfilling Enneagram hell prophecy, Larissa, what do I do? I need help right now. Well, you can also book calls with me to do coaching. Um, and you can also get typed if you're like, I don't know, I'm just in hell. I don't know what hell, but I am in hell. You can book a typing call with me. And again, the membership is like the, the low tier, low financial investment um, way to also work with me and you get discount on services. So I hope that you'll check out my brand new shiny little membership and um, don't know why I'm doing all these voices and <laughs> hope that you enjoy uh, the series and get something from it or dig deeper into the whole depression from, since learning your type okay type six known as the loyalist the skeptic the whistleblower the, you know i to me it's more of the investigator than five um the citizen the comedian the everyman the hero you could really call any any three, six, or nine the hero, but six to me actually is the hero because sixes because it's in sixes type structure to access to activate courage. So it's this is kind of rude, but it's going from being a coward to being courageous because when sixes actually go in, like they they come out of their trap, and which is self doubt and cowardice and not trusting themselves and listening to other people when they actually step into their courageous self they're actually the ones who create huge shifts in the world like they're actually the ones who get shit done they're the ones who fucking change policies they're the ones who fight for people's rights so i think six is actually kind of a power type in some ways i know it's not a power type in the rejection sense but it's to me it's actually a power type because six does represent even six comes in all different flavors so when i say it's like the everyman or the citizen that's not like it's not like it's just like npc world it's like every like they're all different they all have like different things to bring to the table it's just they have the same character arc if you will to work through and so type sixes constant doubting of themselves causes them to outsource their mental center to authorities and experts and taking the tried and tested path. So this is because they're a fear type, they're a head type. This is like the kind of the cowardice uh, of, the, of the six. It's like the fear of trust in self, the fear of standing out, the fear of saying the wrong thing and the constantly worrying if what they're doing is right or wrong as super ego types of hurting others they often are like the most guilty type too um it's what prevents them from stepping into their full self-trust and courage which which we need and in the year 2023 which is when this is recorded we need sixes to step into their courage so desperately right now so sixes are always on the lookout for threats to their security it's what keeps them from ever stepping into their power because they're always worried that like something bad's going to happen to them if they do this, if they do that. And so then it can often like lead to them making kind of like wild choices or not doing anything at all. Overthinking is the name of the game with the six. <laughs> Type sixes use the vice of fear to make them feel safe. However, because they're always worrying, doubting themselves or on the lookout for threats, trying to find the bad man, the orange man. <laughs> oh. They outsource their own authority, thinking and inner knowing. And so then they never feel truly safe, trusting, stable or courageous. And I know a lot of sixes actually don't resonate with the idea, the relationship with authority. I don't care about authority and it's not, so it goes beyond authority. It's like also like structures, like um, tribes, like tribes in the sense of like community, like people you work with. It's like the webs, the grids of people. Um, it's just it's the community who you're all connected to and you know that if you're a six and you're watching this you're like well every everyone does that though right no they don't <laughs> they don't um yeah type six is fear of being wrong 
deceived. So that's a big one too, is that they're very untrust. It's like they're, they're untrusting, but they're too trusting. This is sort of the interesting thing about sixes is that for everything you can say about them, they're fearful. They're also courageous. They're untrusting. They're also too trusting. They're insecure. They're also over. They're also, they can also rise into this confident thing where then they become like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to take it on. So they, they embody these polarities probably more than any other type actually, which I think is beautiful. So they fear being unsupported or outcast, but again, they can also be the ones that start their own tribes, right? They, they're the ones who create the misfit, the misfit fringe parties, like the, um, they were outcast and then they become the person who takes others. Uh, this fear of being like rejected, ejected from the tribe, unsupported, outcast, um, being bad, seen as bad, uh, doing something that then they feel guilty for, responsible, doing the thing that hurts somebody. So this is what keeps them in a pattern of abandoning their own mind. And like, that sounds super offensive. Uh, but what I mean is that it's just that outsourcing. It's like needing to check in. And a lot of sixes don't realize that they do this. So this does seem like, well, I don't do that. <laughs> you probably do that, but you don't know that you do that. <laughs> Um, not because you don't know your own mind, but it's just like, it's because it's baked in, right? It's like abandoning your own mind in the sense of, it's like, you got to be on the same page as your friends or, well, I like conflict. I'll fight with my friends, but you're fighting with your friends to get agreement. You want them to be on the same page as you, because if the people close to you are not in agreement with you on these, and it has to be about issues that you care about. It doesn't matter if it's some frivolous thing, like, I think family matters was better than full house or something. It's like, no, obviously who cares? It's about bigger issues. Like it's about the issues that, that a six feels like creates their security, their safety blanket. What makes them feel like, okay, I, I, I feel good. Like I can sleep at night. I can trust like my friend. I trust these people, my boyfriend, whatever. Like I we're on the same page. So things are good. But it's when they're not on the same page that the six starts to get reactive and it's like a personal attack almost it's like well why don't you agree with me on these issues they're very important so sixes can get very dogmatic and black and white about that kind of stuff of course like so can some other types but this is like a growth path for sixes so um but yeah and so often it takes something really fucked up happening for a six to break out of that, to break that pattern and be like, wait a second, something's not right here. But they're they're the best ones actually when this does happen. Like I said, they're the whistleblowers because they're the ones who will then when they realize that the the network, the community, the institution, the authorities are fucking screwing them. There's something corrupt going on as a super ego type, corruption matters they're the ones who will actually do something about it. They're the ones who will fucking call the police. Maybe not, that's not a good, uh, but they'll, they're the ones who will call the newspaper. They're the ones who will out people because, hey, you can't do that. So they're good as long as they think the system's working, but as soon as it's not, then the six gets activated. So this is where you get those like talks of like counterphobic sixes or whatever, the rebel sixes. Um, within them, and then they begin to distrust or find the expert authority system to be corrupt, inaccurate, or disappointing. So this is often like a growth path for sixes that happens at some point throughout their life. Um, this can show up in politics, religion, and the family dynamic, the community dynamic, at work, at school, whatever. The sphere can also create tribal dynamics. <laughs> Uh, as the six and, you know, other sixes around them or other six fixers, strong six fixers, try and create a secure support system. So this can create a tribe which can be good and bad because uh, they can also sometimes overdo, uh, overdo it in a way to feel safe together. So they can wild out. Um, they might uh, really get swept up in a cause, no matter how it starts here, and then they get carried away, and then suddenly they're the bad guys. Um, or, you know, they can, a lot of sixes are often like worried about, well, I mean, aren't we all? But, uh, you know, they could be like the preppers, if you will. They're the ones who <laughs> have like 20 guns and uh, five years worth of food. Thank God for the sixes, I say. Um, but and they can become overly paranoid or super jealous uh whether like whatever that shows up in their instincts so it could be like their 
paranoid someone's gonna steal their shit they could be paranoid that someone's stealing their man they could be paranoid that like someone's coming for their land whatever um and so how they can overcome this trap so i know i'm being like really reductive about sixes in in this video but this is sort of like in your life it will probably manifest differently than these examples right so um it can just like it can manifest in a less extreme version where it's just like showing up in your friend circles or something and it's like oh like i don't i really don't like my friend's politics and like now we're not friends now we're not speaking you know what i mean so it can just be these things and this is not your defining trait either as a six this is just the trap so in order for the six to finally have the safety and courage they need they need to allow themselves to trust both themselves and that things can work out for the best and that it's safe to have hope and optimism so usually sixes are really negative um or just cynical and i mean i love that about sixes because that's what makes them actually usually quite funny that's why most of the the big comedians the really funny comedians are sixes it's they just zero right in on the problem. They, they get hyper focused on, uh, especially if they if they're a six that's, that ends up with a chip on their shoulder. Um, they they see the problem in the system. They see the problem in the institution, in the tribe, in the whatever. They're always the ones who are like really good at pointing out like, um, like kind of like people's flaws. They're very good at sniffing out hypocrisy um they're very good at yeah sniffing out where other people are not in integrity as a super ego type it's like they can kind of um they can see the flaws if you will in the system because because of this like insecurity and fear they are always on the lookout for it so it does make them actually great creatives um and speakers so this is like obviously what happens when a six begins to break the trap. It's like they're do, they're using their type to their advantage. So sixes need to realize that reality is also light as well as dark. And that truth that does not always have to be so grim and fretful or also like truth is like subjective. I know that sixes hate this. <laughs> as a seven, don't I know sixes hate this, but truth is kind of subjective and they don't like that and so sixes need to like relax their grip on the concept of truth and facts and data and understand that what's right for someone might not be right for another person and that we all don't have to follow the same rules we don't all have to be on the same page and that sometimes like they're gonna just it's gonna be okay if they're going to survive, we don't all have to be on the same page to get along. We don't all have to be on the same page to be safe and secure. And that they can, they'll have the support that they need. So sixes really need to like allow for trust um, so that they can relax and release the need to worry. And also like a, another thing um, with sixes is often like they feel like if they're not constantly anxious and constantly worrying, fretting, worst case scenarioing, planning for that worst case scenario, that's something that is going to be all their fault if something bad happens. Like it's like a super ego kind of manifestation in the head center where it's like if I'm not constantly like prepping, I'm not planning, I'm not like thinking about the worst case scenarios that then it's my fault. And the thing is actually if you're a six, you are already living that worst case scenario. Your nervous system actually does not know the difference when you are you you're having like a fucking spiral for three hours about this person gonna die, this person gonna die, and then you get like a headache. I've been waiting six, all right. I'm familiar with these <laughs> these scenarios, but it's like if you that actually doesn't help. That doesn't help anything, and in fact, it probably actually does manifest. It actually kind of helps to manifest it in some ways if you're constantly fixated on it then if you've already watched the RAS module, you will know what you think about constantly creates your reality. And no, I am not blaming you for anything that has happened to anybody you love or anything like this. This is just the laws of the universe. So now you know it. The next time you catch yourself doing a spiral, what do I want to happen? Think about that instead. Here's what could happen. Here's what could go wrong. What do I want to happen? How could that happen? How could that happen? How could I make that happen? How could I encourage that outcome to happen instead of what's the worst case thing that could happen and what will I do when that happens? Do you feel the, the difference, the energy shift right there already? 